HBO show called Game of Thrones. Yes! <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, how many of you people who just raised their hand consider themselves to be a fan of this show? Cool. <laughs> Seems like the talk would be really interesting for you. And one more question. Is Jon Snow among one of your favorite characters? Yes. yes. And Zoe is also my favorite character. <laughs> and if you remember, at the end of season 5, he was betrayed and he was stabbed by his fellow Nightwatch members. And then he, just, he was just left dying in the snow. And the whole world was wondering if he died or not. And Zoe were revealed to Munich. But instead of waiting for another year until a new season comes out, we decided to predict his death with machine learning. And also along the way the fate of all other um, over 1400 characters who were still alive at the end of um, season 5. So our students, they made this uh, method available online and bam, a few days later there was an article coming in the newspaper saying that Jon Snow did not die. <laughs> And uh, funny enough, this article was followed by over 2,000 other articles and endless TV and radio interviews. And this was all extremely cool, but the really cool message behind, behind this method is that our students, who neither come from Hollywood nor have any experience in storytelling, they excelled, they did something really amazing using machine learning. Okay, so what is machine learning? Um, uh, <laughs> Okay, machine learning, um, all these words, they are buzzwords that are that come from the field of machine learning and we hear, we hear them all the time. However, not everyone knows that there is an important difference. So the term artificial intelligence was coined in the 1950s when the first machines were developed to perform one particular task as good or maybe even better than we humans can. For example, computers playing chess uh, are an example of narrow artificial intelligence. Now, this method, they remained out of the spotlight for quite a while until they became more intelligent through incorporation of machine learning methods. These methods, they were solely rule-based. While these methods, they made observations from data they had available in order to make future predictions about the world. Rule-based means use those rules that we humans impose on the machine, such as, for example, if you see an animal, then check if it's big or small, if it's small, then check if it, if it can climb the tree, if it can climb the tree, then maybe it's a So this is rule-based. This means that they do not need any of such rules anymore. For example, uh, spam detection software is, uh, is a machine learning method. Now, deep learning, this is a subsection of machine learning, and it covers the most effective and most complex algorithms we have. They are so effective because now these algorithms, they can process huge amounts of data, and now we finally also have those computational resources in order for them to actually be able to process this data. My talk today is about machine learning. So, um, applications of machine learning can be found anywhere. You can just reach into your pocket where you will find a device that's full of machine learning. If you just uh, want to take a picture, then this device will recognize that there is a face, it will even draw a frame around the face, and when the picture is taken, it will even give a name of a person to this picture. And this is all example of computer vision. Computer vision basically automates everything that we with our, with our eyes can also do. Now, recommendations, you all know that Amazon knows sometimes much better than us if you want to buy <laughs> Facebook also very often knows much better than us whom we should be friends with. So these are examples of recommendation engines. Payable quite easily discovers fraud by comparing thousands of millions of transactions between buyer, buyers and sellers, and if there is something that is not right, it identifies it as a money wandering. Sales driving cars is a buzzword. We don't really have them in Munich yet, but I personally believe that uh, quite soon they will be around. And healthcare, this is the area where I in particular come from. I'm very excited about this part because it's also full of machine learning. Um, at the university we were developing methods that were identifying those um, side effects that are present in one group of people but not in the other because our goal of um, scientists who work in this field is to develop this kind of medicine that is suited for every single person and so that there are a few, as few as possible side effects so that we can live 
longer and also heavier. Metals to be gold. So machine learning methods they are very smart. <laughs> and now they can do also those things that before only humans could do. Classification is one of the concepts by which um, this algorithm they learn to map observations, also called features, to categories, also called classes. Well, let me give you an example of what I mean. Imagine we have a data set of cats and dogs. And now we can measure them. For example, with their size, this will be our feature one. We can be small or large. We can go ahead and continue measuring. For example, their weight. This will be our feature two, from light to heavy. Now, having these measures, we can map our cats and dogs into this two-dimensional system. It will look somehow like that. Now, when we train a machine learning method, what we do is that we find that boundary that best separates instances of these two classes from each other. So that rather large and heavy animals they found on one side of this boundary and rather small and light are found on the other side of the boundary. So this is training. Now, if we have a new object, we don't know what kind of animal it is, this is called testing. So what we're doing is we're looking at what side of the boundary we can see. And in this example, it's obvious <laughs> that this is on the side of the cats. So the prediction would be a cat, and that would be a correct prediction. So you see, when we train a machine learning method, then we learn from the training data, from the available data we have, in order to make future inferences about future objects. And uh, our job of people who supervise and develop these methods is that we make as few mistakes as possible. That means that we draw our boundary this way, but not, for example, this way. <laughs> And uh, this is a very simple example. It, it, it happens as good as never that in the real world we work with just two dimensional states. Usually it's much, much higher. So the, I said that this whole story will be about Game of Thrones. So obviously we did apply machine learning to Game of Thrones. In order to uh, work with Game of Thrones, data first we had to get the, the data. And very good for us, there is a website, there is like an Wikipedia and an encyclopedia of Game of Thrones, purely run by fans of the show, <laughs> that, uh, that collects all information about the characters. If there is a new season that's coming out or a new episode, then the fans are just automatically, just at the same time, they enter the new information, so it's, it's full of information. And so we use this web page in order to collect information from over 2,000 characters of the show. One of the nice things that happened while we were aggregating this data is that all of a sudden <laughs> we learned new things about the story we thought we know so well. For example, we found that the show is full of characters. <laughs> On average, there are uh, around 34 characters in each episode, and in every episode there are, on average, about four new characters that are always introduced um, again and again. Funny enough, there are even characters for being introduced in an episode and being killed off <laughs> in the same episode, like this poor guy. And maybe this number of characters also explains why this show is so blood expensive. Um, we also saw that there are twice as many men as there are women. However, being a man puts you in a much higher danger. <laughs> because men, <laughs> they tend to die much more often than women do, they're rather safe. Also, it appears that class level does not matter when it comes to the danger, to the level of danger. Because George Martin, the author of the show, he tends to kill high-born novels just at the same rate as low-born low -born peasants. We also saw that if you reach the age of 60 in the show, then your chances of missing a violent death they also go down immensely, as people after 60 they seem to die of natural death. <laughs> um, all of that was extremely interesting and extremely cool, but at the end of the day we wanted to predict who's going to die. So for each of the 2,000 characters, over 2,000 characters, we collected all information we could find in this wiki page, such as for example uh, what book a character appeared in, what house comes from culture, what's his gender, age, whether he's married, if his spouse is alive, and so on. And altogether, we found these 24 features 
to be the most relevant, to be the most important for the prediction. In our case, the docs we had size and weight, here we have the sensible features. For example, we saw that belonging to a certain house um, uh, makes a person die. <laughs> however, <laughs> however, this feature alone is not um, deterministic. It's always a combination of all these 24 features for a character to die. We used these 24 features in order to make prediction with the support vector machine, which is, a, which is an algorithm that performs classification. Here it is shown to be in a two-dimensional space, but it's actually a 24. Dimensional space is just shown for simplicity. So what happens here is that this algorithm also learns to separate dead characters from alive. And if we have a new character who is still alive, <laughs> then it looks at how similar are his features to those who have already died and to those who are still alive. And if his features are more similar to features of these people, then he's predicted to be dying soon. This is how our work worked. <laughs> and altogether, we were correct in 74% of all cases. And this number was populated by taking all correct predictions and dividing them by the total number of characters. And one of the surprising findings we made in the second beginning is that we predicted Jon Snow to die only at 11%, which is like nothing. <laughs> And we were very happy to see in the beginning of season 6 that he indeed came back from the world of death. Also, our algorithm and the witch in the show, her name is Maggie, they both said that this guy he would die. And yeah, we were happy to see what was happening <laughs> um, Even though our algorithm had a prediction accuracy of 73%, it's actually quite high. It was not perfect. And there is this website that our students have created where they put an analysis of which of our predictions came true, which did not came true. And uh, yeah, the last year, the last past season six, it was a lot of fun to observe <laughs> which of our predictions actually came true, which did not came true, and which for sure did not yet come true. <laughs> and uh, to our great surprise and great satisfaction, this show got a mind-blogging interest by the media. It got covered by over 2,000 articles and uh, with an estimated reach of 1.2 billion people. And I'm saying all of this not only to brag that as well, but, but, there, <laughs> but there is also a big lesson to learn from the story, I think. And that is that by, well, we think that people, they connected so much with the story is because it showed that by using any data freely available out there, we can actually do many exciting inferences and predictions. And um, this idea actually was also confirmed by its other articles that said, well, you know what, by using machine learning and this out-of-the-box thinking of our students, actually we can do crazy things. Like, for example, we can even create a new industrial revolution, Industry 4.0, where a bunch of students who come from university, who don't have any experience with working in industry, just by being that creative, just by doing such cool things with this cool tool, can do, can, can really, um, yeah, be great in a field that actually they should not have no experience with. And uh, so, yes, I also would like to encourage every one of you, if you have not any experience with machine learning yet, I would like you to start, <laughs> I would like you to be bold, I would like you to be creative, and also would like you to change the world <laughs> using machine learning, because it is possible. <laughs> and I also would like to say a few thank you words to the professor at Munich who always believed in us, in me, and let us do all kinds of crazy things. And uh, to these people who helped with um, making the story public. Also to my co-supervisors, we were four people who were running this project. And of course to also our students who were actually the true heroes <laughs> of Game of Thrones uh, at Team Munich. And thank you for your attention. <laughs> <laughs>